welcome back to the Club Room, brought to you by Willie Kim. And today I'm super jazzed to have an actual sports agent in the house. And, you know, I think we've all seen, or most of us have seen the show Ballers and think that, you know, being a sports agent is basically 24-7 luxury and fun and champagne and all that kind of stuff. And it doesn't really seem like they work too hard. So I decided to bring in James Haddad. He's going to tell us the real truth on what it's like to be a uh, an agent and uh, some of the uh, the hurdles and some of the frustrations, but also some of the victories and so forth. So I'm going to bring him in in one second, um, but I'm going to first just do a quick little brief intro. Um, and James is uh, originally from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I'm excited that I knew that it was in Manitoba. But um, and then decided to, not decided to, well, he did decide to go, but he got received a football scholarship to attend the University of British Columbia. And it's interesting because he grew up playing hockey, but he also knew how to play linebackers. So they brought him in to be a linebacker and he decided to stay there. He met his uh, now current wife uh, there. And so they've uh, set down roots in British Columbia and Vancouver. And uh, he's uh, a client rep with the puck agency, but he's also... He founded his own company called Dynamic Athlete Agency, and uh, he represents mostly hockey players. And uh, he's also a member of Toastmasters. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'm also a member. It's, uh, to me, a fantastic organization. It's a global one that teaches how to be a better public speaker. And I certainly found out inv invaluable as I was uh, years ago uh, getting into public speaking because uh, they really teach you a lot of the nuts and bolts of what makes a speech more compelling but also some of the things like for example i was a big pacer i paced too much and i pace less so anyways enough about all that stuff um i want to bring james in so james come on in and we'll get the party started here James, welcome. Appreciate you. Could, glad you could make it. Um, I guess I want to jump right in and and ask you. You know what? I'm I'm always curious to hear this because most of us end up in things that we never ex exactly anticipated doing, right? Right. At all. Um, what made you think one day, like, hmm, maybe I'll be an agent? Or what? Yeah. Or tell me the story about that. It, it's a great question, and you know as you mentioned a bit there, like grew up playing sports, whether it was, you know, hockey, football, whatever, have a, have a passion for sports and wanted to stay involved in it in some capacity. But as I think, you know, a lot of people on this call can relate to, you know, depending on what that looks like, it's, it's tough. It's, you know, if you're coaching or a trainer, you know, anything on the team side, it's travel. It's weekends, holidays, on the road. You're getting hired to be in a place for two, three, four years, get fired, move on, right? All of that stuff. And so, you know, of course, had that passion for, for hockey and wanted to stay involved, but you're trying to also kind of carve out a life, right? And what is this actually going to look like? And so that took me to the business side and you know, the front office piece. And this is where I think for at least for myself, where it really came into you know, who I am and the things that, that I believe in. And I still think about and relate to the athletes. You know, I see myself, you know, whatever that means, like on the side of the athletes. And so when you're talking about, you know, team 
versus the athlete in a contract negotiation or in any sort of you know trade demands or which is whatever it is you know i want to be on the side that's supporting the athlete and so that's what it ultimately led me to make that decision to go to the agent route versus trying to say work my way through a front office <clears throat> so Going through that agent route, though, it's not, I, I think some people may think that it's just something that happens overnight. Tell me a little bit about what you had to learn to become an agent. What, what are some of the steps needed to get to before you even think about taking on your first client? Well, I, it's, it is. It's, and I think, you know, like a lot of people's beginning stories, you start to realize like how little you actually knew when you, when you got started. But I was very fortunate to have, you know, a local agent here in Vancouver who was, willing to take me under his wing and start to show me the ropes. But it is, it's you, you learn very, very quickly that it's much, much more than what any, everyone thinks. Like, what do people think about with agents, right? It's like negotiating the contract. Like you said, okay, we did it 10 million a year, pop the champagne, right? Like exactly. But it, it's, especially in a sport where you're working with players at, you know, such a young age, as young as 15 years old, in some cases, you're, the, you are the expert that they're coming to for their off seasons, their skill development, their mental performance, mental health, you know, choosing which teams to play on in any given year. And just, if you become, you become the, the go-to for every major decision that this kid and this family is making about their career. And so it, 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 it takes you in a million different directions than, than what you thought. And then the other piece is, well, okay, you know, how are you going to get these, these players and so that again that just the grind especially in those early days where no one knows who you are and no one's going to give you the, the time of day or access to any of these players and so it was you know <clears throat> just in the ranks you know grinding out scouting looking for players or honest you know couldn't because i wasn't a high enough certification of as an agent yet you know not being able to get credential to junior pro hockey games and so just trying to find ways to get myself yeah. in there. Yeah. And so there is, it's, there's, it, you're learning new stuff every day, but it was what I thought it was and what it actually is. It wasn't even close. So does anybody actually teach that sort of class that says, Hey, it's not like this. This is how it really is. Or is it everyone's left to fend for themselves? Yeah, it really is. It's a, yeah. in that sense, it's a very closed in industry where there's, the agents who are having you know the success and even in terms of their hiring practices or the the things they communicate to their own employees it can be very very closed you know behind the scenes because they're very secretive of all of it so no it, it there's you know with that in mind there's a lot of you know banging your head against the wall and trying to figure it out on your own or thankfully you know with some mentors or some different partners people you meet along the way but no there's no you know how there's no agent certification course that you can take on the weekends <laughs> or or like lee steinberg yeah he's willing to help you uh become a better agent um, yeah exactly so i think the the thing that i'm certainly very curious about is you know you mentioned a few minutes ago about uh that sometimes these athletes you, you're speaking to them as, as young as 15 um is there a specific age limit where they cannot sign a contract until or is that the age or what's tell me a little bit about that yeah so it is it's the again this is where you know because it is so competitive you're a, you're not locking in a 15 year old to to anything right and so it is it's that at that age it's that handshake agreement that you're going to be helping them and then there'll be that payoff when they turn pro the contracts between the agents and the players is it's dictated by the nhl players association so it's very player friendly and so even if you were to get them to, to sign it at say 15 16 as soon as you start working with them there's nothing holding them because it's everything in that contract just dictates what happens when they sign a pro contract commissions percentages and all of that so right. no it's the again when you talk about the challenges when you're first starting to do this type of thing it's finding the the right kids the right players is one thing and keeping them is a whole nother thing so how uh, speaking of that because obviously the typically it's the parent or parents that make a lot of the decisions on behalf of the right so so you really all it's almost like having to impress um 
your date's parents kind of a thing like that that's the most important thing to do or right. one of the most important things to do so um you know i've met plenty of agents who i don't think i'd ever introduce them to my or something like that right um but then there's some that i would so what do you think you know what's a like what are some of the important things that an agent needs to do to sort of um convince a 15 16 year old hey listen i'm going to be your person over the next few years until it's time to until but beyond signing that first pro contract what are what are some of the things that you feel maybe work the best or i mean i don't give away all your secrets but the point being that uh you know how do you feel you know what brings your special sauce the james sauce yeah no it's uh it's a great question and yeah if you're one of the the major agencies right you don't necessarily have to provide a ton you can just point to your so here's you know we work with all these hall of famers and we'll mm -hmm. do the same for you and that that might be enough well when you don't have that like you said what are you able to do and so what my vision was and is and what i continue to build is it has to be more than just the agency piece it has to be more than just like okay commit to working with me now and in five years when you sign a pro deal will come through at that point, right? Well, over those five years, what are they going to do? And it's creating an ecosystem that can really help them become the best versions of themselves. You know, as you, in a sport like hockey, you might play on different teams and different organizations, you know, three, four years in a row as you're working your way through the, the lower levels. Well, the coaching, the support that you get just on all these different factors, it might be great. It might be terrible, right? Somewhere in between. And there's no through line. Right. It's just, well, this coach's philosophy and then this coach's philosophy. And then, the, and so it's creating that ecosystem where we, let's have that. If it's going to be five years before they turn pro, well, what's the five year plan on the skill side, on the off ice side, mental performance, starting to get into like social media, are there marketing opportunities? And just you're building it in house so that this player is that, whether it's the, they're a brand onto themselves, but they're just, they're, they're their own support team with everything that we're able to provide. And then it is, it's not even about, you know, the contract piece. It's just that like what we're providing is so integral to who they're becoming as a player that they won't want to leave. So uh, what do you think is the toughest question a parent will ask you? I mean, is it, uh, you know, or I mean, throw out a couple questions that you find are like, you know, it's, it's tough to give a straight answer at that age. Well, I mean, of course it's people want, you know, when you're making big decisions. So mm -hmm. one of the big ones for younger players is, do you go the, what, what's called the major junior route or do you go the college route mm -hmm. and they want guarantees, like which one's going to work, right? Which one's the best one for my kid. And of course you've got your experience and your connections and everything to point them in the right direction, but there's, there's no guarantees. And to your point with, you know, maybe how some other agents op operate, there's people out there who will give you guarantees, oh, yeah. you know, whether or not they can actually follow through on them might be something different. And so it's, it can be a challenge trying to, when you're really trying to sell yourself and what you're able to provide, but, you know, leave, like, just be upfront about it. Well, listen, there's still, there's still that unknown piece, but I, the first thing that jumped to mind for me as well was when i was first starting this really you have this vision and this plan and like this ecosystem and this is what you're going to have as a player and this is what we're going to be able to do for you and it's like that's all amazing james do you have any players any success stories right well, right no. <laughs> not yeah. yet but like trust me it's going to work and it is and that you know of course that was that was a challenge but then you start to get those success stories and that track record and those conversations start to become a little bit easier now, is there a, this sounds crazy, but is there such a thing as a Yelp reviews for, for agents? Like, is there a place that people, if I, if I had a 16 year old and I was like, I'd love to see what my options are. Is there a place to find that in a one place or do I have to go to, or do I go to, you know, CAA or whoever it is, or you and see what your testimonials are? Yeah. And that's, so the short answer is no, there's been some different companies, some websites that have tried to uh to do it and just haven't been able to get the traction but it is it's hockey which i'm sure is the same as other sports even though it's a, a global sport in so many ways mm -hmm. like it's it's such a tight-knit community like every it seems like you know everybody you talk to is like oh my uncle you know is this guy who coached with him who played with yeah. him and so it is you start to you start to gain a reputation in this industry very very quickly and i think where it really is going to hurt you is on the referral side 
you know, you might, you, if you aren't doing things the right way or not having, you know, the successes that you should, you might be able to still go out there and sell yourself to people, but where you're really going to have your breakthroughs is with the referrals specifically from teams, right. And from GMs you've dealt with in the past and all those different things. And so you're not going to have any of that without that reputation. That's interesting. So, um, how do you, how comfortable are you to share testimonials from let's say GMs and so forth? Do you find that it's something that uh, they're comfortable doing or not at all? Or no, I would, I would from GMs and so I would say yeah. no, especially if it was going to be shared. Like, you know, if you called a GM and we're like, you know, what do you think of James? Yeah. He'd give you, he'd give you his opinion one way or the other, but to have that on my website, for example, like I, yeah, I think that'd be, that'd be tough. And I get it. It's, it's a tough job for them because they, they might think I do great work, but they might think nine other agents do great work as well. Right. And so they don't want to be seen as, you know, leaning one way or the other. So their quote would be, James is one of the top 20 agents that I work with. Yeah. <laughs> Something exactly. like that. And I work yeah, with yeah. 10. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> but anyways, um, so, you know, one of the things that you talk about on, I mean, I've seen it, you've written it, uh, is that you, you know, one of the things that you wanted to do was create what you called the one of the youngest, most innovative, forward-thinking agencies. Um, what do you think you can do to make yourself be considered innovative? Well, I, I think it's really the the different stuff that you know, I've been touching on is it's you know traditional way of being an agent is yeah you. You recruit the kid at 15, but it's really for nothing more than to kind of plant your flag on him and just make sure that you've got him for when he hits big. You'll throw him a hoodie with your logo on it. Here's a couple hockey sticks. We run our agency camp for three days every summer. And it's just, it's all good stuff, but it's it's fluff, right? It's just all surface level. And so, you know, again, when you, as you start to get into this industry, and you, one of the things that blew me away, and it still does, honestly, is whether it's coaches or agents or the, just these people who are around these players who are supposed to have their best interest, you're seeing, you can watch a kid who's 15 years old and he might be exceptional, but you can see very quickly, well, there's certain parts to his game or his physical development or whatever it is that are going to be a real problem at the NHL level, at the, just the college level, right? Whatever it is. And nobody talks to these players or families about it. They just, pat them on the back, tell them that they're all stars, everything's great. And then if things don't work out, they fade into the background. And so from that, you know, one of the first things we do, which it is very counterintuitive is when we're recruiting or have just gotten one of these top young players, the first thing we're doing is getting on a zoom call, breaking down video and telling them all the things they need to get better at, which I think, a lot of people are scared to do because they're scared of losing the player, but our the set, like it's 95% of the players and families who absolutely love it because somebody's actually giving them feedback. And then from that place, we can then build, like I said, if it's something simple, like strength training, skill development, mental performance, whatever it is. And now we're, you're building a holistic solution for the kid. And to me that that's when I say cutting edge, like that's what it means to me. Well, look, it's it's all about value add. I mean, I um, I've seen too many times where people were, were either sent sending me via social media, whatever it is, prompts to they'll ten x my business or get me high paying clients and all this kind of stuff, but they never they're just trying for the sale. And if anybody actually said, "Hey, Mark, I saw your recent podcast episode with Bob Jones or whatever it was, or I, I listened to the one with this, or I watched your club room with whatever. And I thought it was fantastic because blank and I happened to do blank. Then I'm listening because they took, they took the extra time to do the extra work. And I think that what you're talking about is fantastic because if I was uh, a parent of a, of, of a teenager and, uh, and that agent was offering me advice of things that I just didn't know. But even better, if, if you're teaching my son or daughter, hey, listen, work on, you know, his, his or her skating backwards needs some work, especially on the crossover, or, you know, they need to get more comfortable blocking shots or whatever it might be. Now I'm, now I'm like, well, I'm learning from someone who knows. He played, he played when he was younger. He knows the game. And this is someone I want to partner with. Yeah, 
you're right, maybe I can get bells and whistles from the big agencies. Maybe I can get a lovely golf bag or something like that, but that's not helping my son. So I think our daughter. So that's fantastic. Now, um, what are, give me one thing that you were like completely shocked by, like as an age, like, you know, what, what's one thing that you were sort of like, wait a minute, I have to do this. <laughs> anything that um it's yeah yeah i mean the thing that again this jumps to mind is it's it's not consoling the the players after tough games or tournaments yeah. or moments it's consoling the parents and a lot of times the dads after it i mean it is it's that you know again i know i've seen it in all sports but you know especially here in canada with the joke is like the crazy hockey parent for sure and it's you know they're all they're all good people, right? They just want what's best for their kid. You know, it's it's all good. But yeah, just the conversations that you have on a sometimes daily basis and just in terms like, like, what are we even talking about? Like, it's, you know, we go from he's going to the NHL to maybe he should just hang it up and go to school. And then like the difference was like two minutes of ice time from one game to the next. And you're just, and it oh, is like, it's the, 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 the kids are usually the ones who are dialed in. It's a, it just, the, the emotional support that you need to have for the dads is what something I didn't expect for sure. You know, what's interesting is that that reminds me of, I mean, usually when you're playing the sport, even if you lose, you love the playing, you love the competition. And I don't want to say you're okay with the loss if you lose, but you play it and you enjoyed it. It's the spectator right. that struggles with it. So I told him, um, I play in a men's hockey league and right now I'm on, couple of teams and one team is absolutely horrible we're so bad it's it's really horrible and um and i know we're horrible when i'm one of the better players on the team that's not good so um but i just love playing and so at the end of the game i'm, I'm like okay we just lost eight to one but i don't care I, I had a blast but i'm sure someone watching would be like what the hell you suck it up you know whatever so um i totally get that now i guess going forward how do you how do you, do you spend most of your time trying to get new players, new clients, or do you spend most of your time working with the current? I mean, how do you split up your time? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a bit uh, time of year dependent, but it's, it's those two things kind of constantly. Right. And it is, it, it can seem just all the different leagues and levels and teams and players that you're trying to keep a, you know, like your finger on it can mm. you know seem a little overwhelming at first but as when you when you're in it and you're in it every day you know now there's i mean even the nhl level right like you just you have this familiarity with the teams and the players there because you're i mean if you represent a player on that team you, know, you guys on the new york rangers well you're watching the rangers now mm. all the time because you want to keep tabs on him and support him yeah. but at the same time now you're seeing the the young guy that just got called up and maybe you're not familiar with him and you can start to see if he could be a, you know, a fit for you guys and vice versa. And it's the same with the lower levels, junior, you know, amateur mm -hmm. hockey, whatever it is. And so it, it's not necessarily one or the other. It's just the, it kind of all blends together where you're just keeping your pulse on these different leagues and you know, who's popping. And if a lot, again, a lot of guys you've, even once they hit the NHL, I've been following that player, whether I work with them or not for maybe 10 years now, because he's from Vancouver. So I saw him when he was yeah. 15 and then in junior and then, right. And so it's, even though they're new to everyone else, they're not new to you. And so it is, it's, but when, it, when those new guys do present themselves, you, you got to jump on it, right. You got to strike fast. All right. It's time for you to come clean a little bit. Any, uh, I mean, any diva moments from some of your guys? <laughs> No, uh, like I said, if the, the, a lot of these times the, the diva moments come from the dads, but no, especially with the diva moments are with the pro players, I would say. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Or it's just like, you know, especially when there's a change. So when you're going up, everything's fantastic, right? You go from junior and you're in the American Hockey League and you're, you're, you're living the dream right? You couldn't be better. You make the NHL and there's an Escalade picking you up from the airport and it's, you know, Hey, Mr. Moyer, it's great to see you. And you're 20 years old. Like you, you can't even believe it. Right. It's when you're all of a sudden going in the, another direction or transitioning to Europe or wherever it is. Well, you, know, you can make a ton of money in Europe and it's a great, great place to play, but it's not the NHL. And so, you know, especially specifically my, I have one colleague who deals with our Europeans a lot. And yeah, it's, 
with the time change, it's 3 a.m. calls. And, you know, this apartment's bullshit. And, like, I'm not staying mm -hmm. here. And we got to get me yeah. a new place to live. And you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> it's it's 3 in the morning over here. So can, if you can wait about four hours, I'd be happy to help you. And so it's uh, – but, no, that's – especially once guys get the taste of that, say, NHL lifestyle, everything else is, is – Oh, safe. yeah. Um, so uh, you mentioned Europe a second ago. I mean, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of talent – overseas um how i mean are you trying to access any of that for your agency or is it more of a leaning on with puck or how's that work or yeah so it's uh you know i mean and for these conversations you know everything that i'm doing for these you know current future nhl players is underneath that puck umbrella and so yeah it's as puck has expanded and me coming on has definitely been a part of that we're able to mm -hmm. leverage a lot of different things and so for myself specifically it's well now we have great contacts in europe with these european teams well now i can send western canadian kids over to there or conversely we have fantastic mm -hmm. junior hockey here in canada with the whl well, these teams would love to get their hands on say finnish players and so this mm -hmm. is where what ends up becoming is you end up having these almost projects with the different agents within puck agency so tommy Halla, who's our finnish agent over there well whenever he has a player who needs to play junior here in canada well he doesn't know the teams he doesn't know the leagues i do it's a win-win right because now i'm coming to these teams with a high-end european player which helps my relationship with them and that's really where you're able to get creative and really yeah, find some unique solutions for families that isn't just, okay, well, I'm a Finnish player. So I'm going to just go as far as I can through Finland and hope to get drafted. I'm a Canadian player, same thing in Canada. Right. So that's, a, that's really where it comes into play with the Europeans. Do you ever, I mean, look, I know that you're mostly, I mean, I feel like most of your clients are pretty young. Are, are any of them at a point where they need to leave the sport or are they still, everyone's still cranking along? No, there's definitely been guys who have had to leave the sport or chosen to leave the sport, frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, COVID was a great example. Like, yeah. you know, guys who were playing pro or were playing junior and about to make that pro transition, you know, when you're a no doubt future NHL player, you can lose a year. And it's mm -hmm. still, there's, don't get me wrong, there's an impact, but you'll be fine. But when you were a player who needed a big year to keep things going, or to change the trajectory of things of where they were going to go and you didn't get it, it's, you know, it's guys opted out. And I don't, it's, yeah. it's tough. It's tough conversations to have, but it, you know, I, I don't blame, unfortunately I don't blame them either. So that's really where I felt it the most was over this last two years is having guys who were 20, 25 years old, you know, still had plenty of hockey in front of them just 18 months later, like it's, it's time to move on. Yeah. I know a, a couple of them fairly well. I mean, uh, one of them, a friend of mine, he's a young guy. I mean, he's still sort of 26, 27 ish and played minors, played, uh, I mean, he had a shot, I think, but he pulled a plug and decided to be a private uh, pilot. Like he's taking private oh, flying lessons. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, there's, there's, there's some of the guys that, uh, they kind of do that sort of thing, but I, you know, hopefully, hopefully the, all this COVID stuff's behind us. We can really go full speed ahead. Now, in terms of the, um, you know, the, the players themselves, how do you, you know, when you talk about some of the added value stuff that you try to throw at them, is it also, you know, other earning opportunities? Like I think you said earlier, endorsement deals and stuff. Is that stuff that happens much to hockey players or? Yeah, absolutely. Ones? And it, it's, you know, hockey is, a, it's going to be a lot of uh, regional stuff. So, you know, you play for the Rangers, it'll be things within New York. It'll be you know, yep. San Jose, same type of deal. And so, it is, but where I think you're seeing a lot of hockey players and specifically ex-hockey players make a huge impact is in the, the new media space, social media, mm -hmm. podcasting, you know, all and really, you know, carve out a role for themselves. And in, so in terms of with the players that I work with, it really it's it's very player dependent. There's some guys, I mean, you know, I got a, a player that I work with right now who started his own clothing line his last year junior. He's playing in the minor pros, right? Like he's having a hell of a career, but he's also like building this brand actually around hunting funny enough that is something he's passionate about and mm. oh he's in so him and i you know i and it's not even that you're getting paid for it but i'm helping him with social media introductions right just anything that i can do to help him grow that thing and then i've got other players where it's 
it's hockey 24 seven and they don't yeah, want to yeah. think or do anything else. And so, which is fine too. Right. And so it is, it's, but whenever there's a player who, you know, is to use the steal the hashtag, right. More than an athlete and who wants yeah. to be more and do more, even while they're playing, I, I want to do everything I can to help foster that. So can't you, I mean, I, I don't know the rules. Are you allowed to conceptually play? So player Bob Jones yep. is, you know, you've got, you signed, you know, he's got a contract, he's playing next two years and wherever. Um, are you allowed to sign a separate contract with him for endorsement deals or other things? I mean, are you allowed to, or are you only, can you? No, it, it, it all the language for all that's already built into the contract. So mm. absolutely. Some, you know, some guys will have their agent and then they'll have like a, some sort of marketing agent or something like mm. that. But in terms of our language, and it doesn't prohibit them from doing that, but our language already has the, everything spelled out for endorsements and marketing and all those things. Got it. Now, do you find that, are there companies that come to you and say, Hey, listen, we want one of your players to do blank, or is it you going after them or neither? Or how's it usually work? Yeah, I'd say it's a combination for sure. Mm -hmm. Again, like, you know, if you're, if you're working with Sidney Crosby, then yeah, people, are, <laughs> yeah, people, people are coming to you. Right. And you don't have to, right. I mean, not, you don't have to work hard. Right. But it's, it's sorting through people coming to you. Whereas if you're working with just, you know, a local guy on the Winnipeg Jets, who's a good, you know, famous locally, really good player, but doesn't mm -hmm. have that you know national appeal. You might have to work a little harder and be more creative. And so I think that if a player is interested in maximizing that, the easiest like lowest hanging fruit to start with is building your brand online yeah because if you can yeah. you start to and, and again as a pro athlete it's you don't have to create anything you're just just show people what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis and if you're able to do that then you're gonna grow a following very quickly and that's where you'll at least get the starting of people coming to you but also from my point of view it really gives you a package to bring to companies in terms of like here's this player would have picked jets but he's also got 250,000 followers and he's doing he's active every day and everything and so that's that's my recommendation to if you want them coming to you for sure you know speaking of social media so obviously most of these uh younger athletes are going to be gravitating towards instagram maybe tiktok and, and so forth but uh, a funny quick story uh joey gallo of the yankees um actually created a linkedin profile <clears throat> and he was joking about it because he said you know during the lockout so he was saying, look, if this doesn't work itself out, I, I may be looking for a job. And so we created a LinkedIn profile. And then on opening day or spring training, whatever it was, the, the announcer said, well, you know, Joey, you know, are you still going to keep that up? He's like, heck yes. You know, it's, I, I'm meeting some great people. And it's interesting, though, because I find one of the things that athletes should do more of is actually be on a profile, you know, on something like LinkedIn, because the, the networking opportunities, the ability to meet senior business leaders while you're playing is, is through the roof. But the minute you retire, it gets a little bit more challenging. And to me, one of the biggest things that I hear from athletes is that they regret not making more connections with business leaders. They have plenty of fans and everybody wants to meet them and get their autograph and stuff. But to meet the CEO or the whatever it is of a company is, is invaluable, especially as a near retirement age or whatever happens. Um, is that something you would ever try to recommend to your player? I mean, look, I know some of them are really young, but is that something you'd recommend or is that something they don't even want to well and that's so as you know one of the things we really strive to do is you know get to know these guys not just as players but as people understand their families right and build that relationship and so you know a lot of this i don't want to say it happens organically because it's you know something we want to be able to build towards but mm -hmm. you just you, i know my players and i know yeah. the guys that to have that type of conversation they'd be like yeah sure james like whatever but like you know you again the, the player i referenced before who started his own you know clothing company now yeah. and i just even before then just you get a feel for like how he is and he's extroverted loves meeting people like everyone likes him right and to your point you know you're in the colorado avalanche organization and just on that fact people within the Colorado area would love to sit down with you and talk to you. If you're two years out of the avalanches organization, nobody cares anymore. And so you do, if, you know, I have the conversation with everybody, but the guys that I really get a sense that they're, I'd say built for it, geared towards it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's set it up and take advantage of it. Cause right now, even at, even at the junior level, like the, 
the Vancouver Giants. You know, if you're an 18, 19 year old kid who's just, you know, wired a certain way, anyone would sit down with you because you're a 19 year old junior hockey player who's reaching out. Right. But again, like I said, if you're a 24 year old ex junior hockey player, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, uh, I think when they see examples of other athletes who have spent the time and dedicated some of the time, even if it's 20 minutes a week or something to do something that will improve their chances at, at success after the game, how did uh, what you learned from being a linebacker and how did you, how did that translate um, into your success in the sports agency world? Yeah, no, it's a great question. It's a great question. And, you know, and I, and I think just not just playing linebacker, but, but, you know, playing football at the university level, like there's just, again, there's, you learn very quickly that it, going from high school to football, there's way more that goes into being successful at it than, than what you thought. And so just being able to understand that balance between, you know, being part of a team, but also striving as hard as you can for your own personal success and just the stress, being able to manage and navigate the stresses on day to day from practice, the depth chart coming out on Tuesdays, never mind game day and everything that that's going on there. And just being able to just the, the ability to be, you know, mentally exhausted under tremendous stress and still being able to, you know, figure things out on the fly and, and execute is these are, I wouldn't have, I never would have been able to verbalize it like that when I was playing football, but all of those skills have been invaluable to me as I'm going through this, because whether it, you know, this is an extremely competitive industry, whereas we kind of touched on, no one really wants to help you. And so there've been plenty of moments where you yeah. feel that exhaustion, that stress, and you need to make a decision. And it just being able to, to lean on that experience has been invaluable. Well, you know, what's interesting. And a lot of what I, I mean, look, I, uh, the book that I wrote when again, um, picture behind me there, of course, uh, product placement. Um, but it's, it's, uh, we talk about the, the concept of how athletes a lot of times don't realize all the things that they bring to the table as an athlete, the athletic mindset and the, and uh, the skill set that they developed as athletes really translates super well into the business world. And a lot of times I will talk to someone who'll say, well, look, I'm just a dumb jock. That look. No, you're not. You, I mean, when you learn plays, you learn how to pivot on a dime, you learn how to push through obstacles. There's so many, you know, you learn how to, like even, you know, athletes take for granted that their comfort level at being on a big stage, their comfort level at speaking to a microphone, into a camera, in front of people. You know, most of the non-athletes out there are terrified being on a stage, right? So there's so many things that an athlete brings to the table. Give me a sense of, you know, as you continue on in this career, what are some of the things that you may have picked up as an athlete that are helping you out? Well, it's funny. So one of the things that, I mean, you know, there's the kind of the cliched, like hardworking team, team player, teamwork, all that stuff. And, that's, and it's, I mean, it's cliche, but it's all true. It's absolutely right. all true. Yeah. But it's actually some of the things that you almost had to unlearn in a certain way that I think is inter interesting. So especially, you know, going back to the, the football piece where being a leader on a football team is very, very important, but being able to let somebody else be the leader can also be very important. You, know, you talk about mm -hmm. a, a position group or the defense or the entire team. Well, if you've got, you know, <laughs> like 50, 55, just alpha type personalities, it's actually this, the stepping up in a lot of ways can be like, no, like I'm a good player. I'm an important part of this, but he's the leader and I'm going to fall in behind him and because that's going to show the other guys to do the same. And then you get to, you get out of the sports environment and you get into the, you know, the what I call the, right, the real world. And yeah. in a lot of cases, nobody wants to lead and nobody wants to take charge and nobody wants to be that guy in front. And so it, which are things that, you know, it's a mantle that you're comfortable taking, but I just assumed it was just having to relearn that like not everyone's going to be like the inside of a locker room. Not everybody is. And not that every guy on the, on a, any sort of team is perfect, but not everybody is. There's just that baseline of being driven, working your ass off, working together and all those things. And you realize that not every place out there is like that. But again, that's where, that's where 
what I was going through, you know, either this career or some of the things I did between college and starting with this, it's that that's the advantage you have as an athlete. Once you enter the real world is I think incredible because you're just, you're used to getting your ass kicked every day and working hard and not getting a payoff for months or years or whatever it is. And just being able to, but being able to see the big picture and see it through. And what you realize is a lot of people don't have that. Uh, absolutely true. And, you know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, I've noticed that, that former athletes tend to prefer to hire former athletes just because they know that there are some advantages to that. But I also notice that sometimes, um, you know, some companies aren't so sure about the, the idea of bringing them on, but, uh, but I think that, uh, you know, as they bring them in, they'll see that there's that competitive nature and then that, uh, sort of drive to succeed that is so valuable in business. So, there's a lot of lot of reasons to to do that. So, um, one uh, little quick question for you is I'm probably going to throw you off a little bit, but I'm just going to throw it at you anyway. Give me right now three names of people, alive or dead, that you'd love to have dinner with. You know, some that I've always found uh, you know very very fascinating is uh, on the business side of things is is Tim Ferriss you know, four hour work week. I'm yeah. sure you heard him. I'm going to throw in from a, for a hockey perspective. Yeah. I'm going to throw in, uh, Bobby Orr, defenseman Bruins from the seventies. Yeah. And then finally another athlete, I'm going to throw in Tom Brady as well. Who? Yeah. No, it's, it's some quarterback. Yeah. You haven't heard of him. Oh, uh, just, just, you need some eye candy at the table. Someone just, yeah, exactly. Over. Well, I oh, want to, you know, God. yeah. And you know, we, with Tom, I just want to also give him the truth serum and just like, what what deal with the devil did you make? To, yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> to be forty five and still still I think, uh, I think he does. Uh, the name is Bill Belichick, but anyway, that's another story. Um, <laughs> uh, look, I'm a Giants fan. What can I say? Um, but no, that's that's a great answer. Well, look, uh, what's the best way for people to be able to reach out to you? Yeah, there's a you know I'm out on on LinkedIn, just you know under James Haddad. On Twitter, jhaddad98, and uh, through uh, my website at dineathlete.com. I can share all that in the, the chat here as well. Cool. And uh, look, lastly, I mean, listen, I, I truly appreciate you sharing your time today. Um, what, um, I mean, look, I'm, I'm assuming people watching this um, are going to like you. They're going to say, wow, this, this could be a really great uh, agent for us. Um, but for people that are watching, I mean, I, I encourage everyone to, Sort of, if you know parents of, of kids that are at that uh, age where and caliber that might be on the right track uh, to obviously reach out directly to James. James, just just so you all know, is not paying me for this endorsement yet. Um, we'll make that deal next. Although I'm not a trained negotiator, in uh, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I'll try my best. Anyways, but look, thanks thanks for your time. Really appreciate it today. No, well, thanks for having me, Mark. Enjoyed it. Right, awesome. Thank you.